As a man, you have to be a provider. A man is a protector. A man is someone whose life is ruled by principle. For me, that is a man. Good morning, Tabela. My name. It's a pleasure to have you. The pleasure is all mine. I just want to start with something I found quite interesting about you. Um, and that's that which grounds you, which I think is your spirituality. You know, you describe yourself as a royal priesthood. What does that mean to you? For me, it means um, the innate responsibility that uh, every human has mm. uh, for the mere fact that we exist. It means we have certain responsibilities. Mm -hmm. um, I do believe that the Creator has given men, in particular, a certain role to play in society to be um, of mm. the society. He has actually called us in his word that uh, we are the royal priesthood. Mm -hmm. um, so you have to stand out as, as a representative, uh, as a steward of his word, as a steward of his kingdom. Mm. So we are here to represent who he is here on earth since um, heaven is his place and earth is our domain. So when I call myself a royal priesthood, um, I simply mean I represent my father here mm. on earth, yeah. Do you think that your accountability to God has really helped direct the type of roles that you choose? There are roles that are not necessarily, uh, that wouldn't necessarily be uh, uh, described as uh, advancing the kingdom that I belong to. Yeah. Uh, but that I would play um, to show that side of life. Mm -hmm. For example, I recently did a, uh, um, a, a, a story with uh, Ntati Moshesh where she was my wife and I used to abuse her. Mm. So sometimes it's a matter of um, starting a conversation about what is really happening. Um, I once did a play at church as well of an abusive, uh, abusive husband. And I was shocked at how many people came to me and told me that they related with the story because mm. it hit home with them. It's, mm. it's something they were used to, they were familiar with that. How do you define manhood for yourself? Um, a man, number one, has to, interestingly, I was asked this question uh, two days ago when I was giving a talk to some young people. Somebody asked me, what is a man? A man is someone whose life is ruled by principle. Mm -hmm. we, we are living in, in very interesting times where we have to keep redefining our roles, mm -hmm. keep redefining who we are. When your, your backbone is, is, um, is in place, mm -hmm. It wouldn't matter what kind uh, of rules and regulations that the government imposes on you. Mm -hmm. My manhood doesn't have to be defined by the government. It doesn't have to be defined by um, the, the, the rules and regulations of the government of the day. So if the government, if for example, my wife earns more than I do, she will know that I'm the man of the house by the way I treat myself, by the way I treat her. Mm -hmm. If I treat her as my queen, it doesn't matter if she's making 10 times more money than I make. But when she gets home, she, then she will know that this is my king because I'm treating her as my queen. Mm -hmm. So the government has nothing to do with the fact that um, she's uh, 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 it has empowered my wife to make more money than I do. So the moment I feel threatened, it's because I've forgotten who I am, why I'm here, from? and Which what is my relationship mm -hmm. with my father. Actually, I feel very privileged as a man. Mm -hmm. I get, a, I get away with murder simply because I'm a man. Mm -hmm. there's, been a, there's been songs like, it's a man's world. Mm -hmm. However, my standpoint is that um, men treat women the way they do because of fear. Mm -hmm. We fear your power. So in order for you not to show your power, I have to oppress you. Mm -hmm. I feel that women are very strong, much stronger than men. Mm -hmm. Personally, I've been raised by more than eight women, including my grandmother, my mother, mm -hmm. her sisters, mm -hmm. uh, my uncle's wives. Everybody pitched in in my life. Mm -hmm. There's been more influence of women in my life than there has been of men. Mm -hmm. um, I'm in constant awe of what women can do. Women can, uh, uh, um, can be strong at the same time, can be very soft and loving and compassionate. Mm -hmm. Whereas we, Tina Bobaba, we have to always try to display this power. And, so yeah. we, 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 we have a hard time showing the softer side of ourselves. Yeah. Bishop Jakes's daughter, Pastor Cora Jakes Coleman, she says that for people who are married, um, your first ministry is your marriage. And if your marriage is not in order, you are not in order. So 
with the marriage to your wife, do you feel like it's, it's brought some order into your life? Definitely. Um, I, if I wasn't married, I, I don't know if I'd be alive mm -hmm. right now. Mm -hmm. uh, I look at how her coming into my life, um, being, becoming a husband, um, I see how it has changed my life for the better. Yeah. How I use my money. Mm. How I... Uh, they do say that women are better with money. Yes. Yes. For example, I can't be <laughs> wearing a 7,000 rand uh, pair of shoes when we don't have a functioning microwave at home. But before, all I would think about is is buying a Vura, uh, putting new tires <laughs> or putting a new system in my a car. Vura. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, so um, my wife coming into my life has been uh, has been a sign for me of growth as well. And I always say that marriage is a, is a is a university of growth. Mm. You either swim or sink. Mm -hmm. You have to learn to swim mm. to make the marriage work. Marriage is not for boys. Mm. So even if you you get married as a boy, you have to learn to become a man in, in order marriage. to to keep your marriage. Your work. Most people love you for your work. Um, you've been on Isibaya for a couple of years now. Um, but I think with everything in your work, you're a wordsmith. When did this journey with words begin? When did you decide, I don't want to be a doctor, I don't want to be an accountant, you know, when did that happen? I wanted to become a priest growing up. Mm -hmm. uh, I was a Catholic, so I would have become a Catholic priest, meaning you, you, you shape the world with the power of your words. Mm -hmm. So I, I grew up understanding uh, the importance of the power of words. Mm -hmm. So, um, but when that didn't happen, when I changed my mind about becoming a, a priest or a pastor, um, I worked behind the scenes as an editor for about 12 years. But um, I've got a very short concentration span, so I decided, <laughs> let me- How does that work with acting? A uh, short concentration span? W unfortunately, with acting, um, uh, it's different for TV as it, was, as it is with, uh, with okay, theater. because you can edit um, it and, yeah. TV, I get a, I get a, I, I do a role now. I'm doing 13 episodes. We're gonna be shooting for the next three months. Mm -hmm. I can't pros possibly get bored uh, in a short space like three months. Mm -hmm. So you play different roles. It's mm -hmm. always interesting. You're always doing something new, and you're always finding ways of reinventing another character, instead uh, uh, and trying to be careful not to play this character like you played the other character. Mm -hmm. So there's there's that excitement with that. But the beauty uh, with uh, working with words, as you said, is that when you are inventing the character, mm -hmm. you give them the lingo, mm -hmm. you give them the nuances, you give them the style, you give them uh, how they walk, how they talk, how they use words. Mm -hmm. So there's that freedom of using words as you see fit. And what is the dream for your life, you know, in the hereafter, like moving forward? Dream roles, dream vision. What does your life look like after today? I've just played my dream role. That's amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. Um, there are two dream roles that I've been wanting to play before I, I, I hang my gloves. Mm -hmm. I wanted to play the role of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. and I wanted uh, to play the role of uh, Shagazu. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I've played this one. I don't know if I'll be able to play <laughs> this Jesus one. Jesus Christ. Uh, no, no, no. I've played so Jesus, played, Christ, played uh, Jesus Christ in the, okay. in the play at church. Shagazu. Yeah, so I don't know if that's going to happen, but... Uh, I, I saw a tweet <laughs> last night when they said um, that there's a production happening in place and, uh, about, you know, Shagazula's life. Yes, yes. And in the comments, um, someone asked, you know, who do you think should play it? And your name came up about three times. So, you know... I hope the producers saw that. <laughs> <laughs> so never say never. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I am hoping. I am hoping. I'm not going to lie. Um, because you must know, I mean, Ushaga Zulu in my head is Uheni Yes. Ang Mazo Munyushaga Min. Yes. So uh, the next best fit would be you. And by the way, he wasn't a duck bone, Ushaga Zulu. He was here yellow bone. He, not yellow bone, but he was quite light. But he was quite light. Are yes. you serious? Yes, because of, according to E. Bongo Zamakosi, ah. uh, when they say, but they say he glowed like the sun. Ah. So he was. Not a yellow bone, but he was quite like. No, I think the dark bones won't accept that. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm a yellow bone. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have enough They're in taking life. everything. No, the context, Shagazulu. <laughs> wow. No. Yeah. So, so that's my journey. Um, but also in the future, um, I am working on starting my book club. 
Amazing. I'm starting a book club with the young people where I'm going to be using South African motivational authors, authors incredible. Um, to, uh, to share uh, uh, their wisdom with them. Incredible. Thank you so much. Thank you for sharing your wisdom with us today. Thank you. And all the best with everything. You will get that role. Thank In you very Jesus much. In Jesus' name, it is done. I receive it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>